Venous cannulation is a minimally invasive and commonly performed procedure that provides direct access to the patient's bloodstream through the insertion of a catheter. Inserting venous cannulas is a procedure that will commonly be expected to perform and with safe aseptic technique. So being able to perform it correctly is vitally important to know the key steps in performing the procedure, be able to identify appropriate sites for cannula insertion, and importantly, be aware of the types of complications that may arise as a result of the procedure itself. The indications for performing venous cannulation include the administration of intravenous fluids and blood products, the IV administration of particular medications, nutrition, and also chemotherapy. And also, they can be used to allow the injection of intravenous radiological contrast agents for CTs, MRIs, and other forms of nuclear imaging. Whilst there are no specific absolute contraindications to venous cannulation, these include the patient having a significant burn or infection at the proposed site of cannula insertion, or if the extremity is severely injured. Having identified a suitable vein, and clean the area with the antiseptic wipe and leave the antiseptic preparation to air dry. When cannulating the dorsal of the hand, applies gentle traction to the skin. The cannula needle is inserted with the bevel pointing upwards. It's introduced at an angle about 20 degrees from the skin surface. The needle is slowly passed through the skin until there is a give as the needle tip enters the lumen of the vein. At this point, we slightly lower our hand so to reduce the angle of the cannula. The needle is then gently progressed a further two to three millimeters. At this point, the cannula can then be smoothly advanced over the needle by moving the hub of the cannula towards the skin surface. After seeing the flashback, it's important to lower the cannula and reduce the angle of insertion before advancing the needle any further. Otherwise, we risk puncturing the back wall of the vessel which could lead to the formation of a hematoma, bleeding, being unable to successfully cannulate the vein. We also may cause injury to adjacent structures, such as blood vessels or nerves, which may lead to pain and swelling. And in severe cases, the presence of the catheter may result in inflammation of the vein, which we refer to as phlebitis. This is relatively common and may occur in as many as 45% of cases of peripheral venous cannulations. The patient may develop thrombosis, or occasionally thrombophobitis, in which the inflamed vessel results in the simultaneous development of a thrombus. Whilst infection and line sepsis occur more commonly with peripheral cannulas, it's typically associated with non-aseptic technique during insertion, poor post-procedure management of the device, and also keeping the cannula in situ for too prolonged a period.